Today, I'm here with best-selling author and international speaker, Frank Nash. He's one of the most in-demand and exciting coaches, writers, and presenters in the fitness industry today. We're, we're easily making 20 to 23K a month just on supplements. Frank most recently partnered with Neil Spruce and global powerhouse .fit to deliver successful nutrition to training clubs and their members worldwide. 84% of all of our members are spending a minimum of $55 a month or more anyway. on subs anyway. He specializes in great culture within his studios, as well as retaining his members for longer and increasing their lifetime member value. And today we're gonna to share exactly how he does that. But the answer of, of quitting, it's not the answer. You started for a reason, I'm not gonna let you quit. What's up everybody, welcome back to another episode of the GSD Show. Today we have a GSD Raw episode. Now, for those of you guys that have been following oh, baby, the show like for a raw. while, oh, oh, did you hear that? Say it again. Hold oh, on. Oh, baby, I like it raw. That isn't a gangster rapper. That, my friend, is Frank Nash. Frank, say what's up to everybody. What's up, everybody? I'm pumped to be here. <laughs> All right. So today on the GSD Raw episode, we've got Mr. Frank Nash. Frank, tell us a little about you, your studio. Where are you from? Dude, I'd say, first of all, everyone listening, it's a pleasure to be here. This show kicks ass. I appreciate um, that. And I'm a big fan. Uh, first off, I, I've been in the industry for about 20 years now. Believe it or not, I, if you're watching the video, you're like, dude, that guy is so young. How is he? It's been in the industry 20 years. <laughs> nah, listen, uh, 20 years. So like like most people, dude, I, most trainer dudes who own clubs, I uh, started in a big box club, Gold's Gym. Mm -hmm. I know you have some history too, Mike with Gold's yep. Gym. And uh, you know, one thing led to another and I opened my own studio, you know, small studio, then one thing led to another and here we are 20 years later, I have two studios. We got um, about 400 in one studio, the other one were roughly around 100 we just opened, so if you're ever in South Rome, Massachusetts, you gotta check this place out. So 401 but, members and then the new one already has 100? Already has 100. Great, great, and, and so tell us about the studio, the, the, the concept, all of it. Yeah, the philosophy is very simple. I mean, I found out a long time ago that I, I wish I was in the fitness industry because at in my heart of hearts, Mike, I'm a strength coach. I mean, I'm a, I'm a real deal X's and O's type guy. I really care about my craft, but I'm in the entertainment business. Mm -hmm. You know, it's fitness tainment, you know, or some other weird word that we can come up with. So um, it really is the heart and soul of what we do is true, <laughs> awesome, uh, results-based fitness. So we strength train, we have, we have flexibility training, mobility, all the stuff that behind the scenes our members don't know, but as a strength coach, if you walked in, You'd be like, dude, this place kicks ass. It's a nightclub. It's a nightclub. Where you but, uh, work but, out like crazy. But on the outside, from uh, the, the sugar and spice that we put on top, man, it's just a nightclub, Mike. Uh, it, it's it's the craziest club you've ever seen. It's a social media it, it is, dude. Like, dream. like Because the pictures that you're able to take in your studio, not just you, but the members, it gives them good content to say that this is where I work out. By the way, what, what's the name of your studio? Because we didn't even mention that Sorry, here. studio's called Stronger. Now, I rebranded three times. Okay. So let me tell you, the, it's a good story. Yep. Uh, here we are, raw. So <laughs> I, I worked at a Gold's Gym, and like I said, I, I worked there for a bit, and I, I left, and I opened my own studio. Now, because I was so bitter at Gold's Gym, you know, some weird falling out, it's like yeah. an ex-girlfriend. You weird, weird. I actually have a bitter gold ship yeah, story too. Right, yeah, we'll talk about that's that. Gonna be, that's that's yeah. really raw. Yeah. It was a bitter exit. So I opened up a gym, a studio called Platinum Performance, because platinum is better than gold. Yeah. I'll show them, right? They didn't care. You know, so <laughs> anyway, a couple years in, no one called it platinum performance. It's like, yeah, I'm gonna go work out at Frank's. I'm gonna go work <laughs> right, out at right. Frank's. So I I then took a step and rebranded to Frank Nash Training Systems okay. uh, for a couple of reasons. Number one is, you know, my ego at the time, mm -hmm. you know, I was this young punk. And you, you should see my hair back then. It was like, you ever see Dragon Ball Z? It was wait, like wait, a super I, I saw you with like a Justin Timberlake, <laughs> like man, 2002 awesome. Justin Timberlake right. haircut. Dude, it, I, I had a white <laughs> seashell necklace. It was crazy. I was, I went tan. You were a boy band guy, for I, sure. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I, was, I was yoked at the time. I wasn't skinny like I am now. Yeah, you were the tough guy in the band. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> There's always that one guy. So Frank Nash Training <laughs> Systems, and again, oh, it took me a little bit of growing up where then we I realized it really wasn't about me, and there are a zillion reasons you and I can go into why you probably shouldn't have mm -hmm. your name on your building. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, it wasn't about me. It really is about our community, and what we're trying to do is build a stronger community. And our vehicle just happens to be Exercise, right? right. And uh, hell, if you if you come to our club and it gets, this is our mission, if you come to our club and you just leave stronger, I'm happy. Now, what does that mean? Does it mean lifting more weight? Hell no. Does it mean maybe gaining a few friends? 
that's a form of strength. Maybe right. some confidence. You know, maybe uh, there's a lot of different forms of strength. And if you just leave uh, a little better, I win, you win, everybody wins. So that's right. really the environment that we're trying to create. It's a club, it's a social scene where we just happen to do fitness and deliver that. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's when you say just, the, you know, it's more, you, you do so many good things on the business end, which is why I wanted you to come down here way out from Boston. Um, you, you really know how to get your members to stay with you longer. Yes. Your retention uh, skills are absolutely incredible. Thank so, you. So I want to talk about that on the show today. So everybody listening, watching, we're going to be diving into one of the best I've met at retaining his members for a long period of time. Also, you know how to get them to buy more from you. You know how to you know how to get people to spend more while they're with you on a daily, weekly, monthly basis. And so not only do you get people to stay with you longer, but the people that stay with you longer are spending more with you, which is the best That's combination. The best right? combination ever. Because that combination, that formula equals a larger lifetime member value, meaning that person is more valuable to your studio than a member that doesn't stay with you as long, doesn't spend as much. And the reason that's important, everybody, is for, for people that really understand marketing and advertising, people that are really great at it, what you all know is the very famous line that all marketers, great marketers say, which is those who can afford the most to, af to acquire a customer wins. If I can spend more than you can to acquire a customer, I will beat you, right? But how do I afford more? The reason I can afford more is because one's worth more. So if your member's only worth $500, right? Because they, let's say they pay you a hundred bucks a month and they stay with you five months, that's pretty average, 500 bucks, right? But I can get people to stay with me for 20 months and I can get them to spend, you know, let's say an extra $50 a month or whatever it is along the way, my member value is worth 3,000. So you mathematically with a net profit of let's say 30%, that means you probably can't spend more than 120, $130 to just break even on your member at 500 bucks, right? Whereas on my end, if my net profit's 1,000 on 3,000, same, same margin, right? I can spend up to $1,000 to acquire a member, which is almost 10 times more. And it makes sense still. Makes 100% sense. Exactly. Or I could spend as much and just kill the profits, right? <laughs> but either way, whoever can acquire, whoever, whoever can spend most to acquire a member in this industry and in most industries, it will win. Yeah, I've so, been saying this for years, Mike. You have to pay to play. <laughs> yes. It's a fact. Um, and, and, and I know you're such a proponent of this. Um, one of the, the things that bother me the most in this industry is people that say they can't afford marketing or they're spending too much on marketing or they kind of put their marketing off to the side, they start doing it themselves. I mean- So it, much more expensive. Oh, it, it, you're losing, dude. I mean, honestly, yeah. you're gonna spend, and the, the last thing you should do, the last thing you should do is, hell, hell sell your house before you give up marketing. Yeah. I mean, really, because then you're dead. Yeah, it, it's, it's, it's the weirdest concept that people just can't understand, which is the cost of not doing marketing is so much it's it's infinitely more expensive so than more expensive. the cost of doing marketing and i think i think you only really learn it as a studio owner or a gym owner until you do it like once you do it then oh, you're yeah. like what was i doing <laughs> like, I'm stupid. why was i running ads yeah. myself oh my what was god I <laughs> like I, I, yeah well I, my, if I my just, dentist was running his own ads i would I, never go to him because that guy can't be a good dentist i just spent three why days building a funnel <laughs> and it sucks <laughs> <laughs> Well, because that's not your thing, right? No! You should be learning how to build a better experience yes, for your It's not a better ad campaign. Right. I, th I think everyone, though, has to go through it once and they have to feel yeah, the pain. Yeah, they'll figure it out. Yeah, well, man. hopefully. Hopefully. Well, hopefully is hopefully. right. You don't but run out of money. your world, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, great. So, all right, we're going to dive in hard. For everybody watching, listening, a lot of you are watching live on Facebook. Some of you aren't. You're listening in. Just so you know, we are going to be tuned in while it's live, okay? So please make sure to like. If you like anything that we're talking about here, like it. If you really like it, comment. If you really, really like it, share it. Tag somebody in. Make sure you subscribe to our show uh, make sure, on all platforms. YouTube, you can follow us on iTunes, wherever you listen. And uh, also, Frank was probably one of the highest ranked speakers at GSDCon. And so if you haven't gotten your tickets for GSDCon 20 yet, Go to gsdcon.com and get your tickets there. And Frank, you went to GSDcon. What were your overall thoughts? I tell you what, I, again, I've been in the industry for a long time, Mike, and uh, you know, I speak all over the world. And I'm not just saying this, it, it was probably the best event I've ever spoken at. In terms of being a speaker, first off, the way I was taken care of, it was a concierge type service, mm -hmm. first class. I absolutely loved it. 
but the whole format itself was amazing. The speakers, the lineup was top notch. Not only did you grab people from the fitness industry, you grabbed experts from outside the industry that we all need to learn from. I'm gonna go one step further. You know me, I like the nightclub. Yeah. And you, you guys gotta to come to the next GSD. <laughs> it, 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 it is like, it is my studio on steroids. <laughs> it was awesome. I mean, like, it's, it's one of those things you can't even, it's like the matrix. You can't yeah. explain. You have to see it with your own eyes. So take the blue pill, all right? Yeah. How far down the rabbit hole do you wanna go? <laughs> it was uh, it was off the hook. Uh, the energy was awesome. And I, I thought you did an amazing job. And I'm already thinking about bringing my whole team out there yeah. next year. Well, actually, we're, we're doing a cool thing now where if you want, like we have a bunch of people that after they came, they said, can I bring my whole company? And we're actually giving them their own sponsor table. Oh. We put a flag up. It has your company logo That's on so the cool. flag. We'll print it out. I, I tell you what, good. Mike, almost every other fitness conference I go to, it's good, but this was next level. Yeah. Uh, and it, again, it's it, you learn a bunch of shit, but it's fun, it's entertaining, and you can do both. Yeah, Shit, yeah, I mean, yeah. listen, if you're a trainer and you wanna learn and you're gonna get away from your club for a couple of days, it doesn't have to be boring. Come hang out with us and have some fun. Well, just like workouts, right? Like everyone listening, <laughs> the workout doesn't have to be, like that's why people don't wanna work out at LA Fitness anymore. It's because that's just, monotonous, right? But when they come in your studio and you got people high-fiving, you got clapping, you got music pumping, you've got things going to the music, all of a sudden, working out's fun. You did something pretty amazing. You understand your customer, which is, you know, studio owners. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't like sitting yeah. for hours and hours and hours and, and not being entertained. We like the opposite. But it's yeah. kind of like studio owners, it's like your member. Right. They don't like exercise, so right. you throw in some entertainment on top of that. Right. It's a, know your customer and I thought you did an amazing job and I can't say this enough you, you gotta come experience this awesome, I can't man. even tell you yeah I love it I love it okay cool so let's dive in let's dive you guys in, ready let's okay dive. so you can retain members for a long time now this is a really really big issue and that's the Huge. fact that you've mastered it's really why I wanted you to come on because um, right now the average fitness studio this is a bizarre stat I've, I've said it before on stage I've said it you know uh, uh, in, in the podcast before as well but data that was given by over 58,000 studios throughout the country through the MindBody software, which is able to measure through their CRM, shows that the average fitness studio, the average fitness studio retains 10% of their members over the course of one year, wow. 10%. So here's what that means, right? Because a lot of people are going, no, that's not mine. Well, let's hold off and think about the math. What this means, the average is, if you sign up 100 people January 1st, as an example, you may still have 110 people by the following January 1st, but only 10 of the original 100 are still with you, if you're the average. I can see that. Now, if you're the best, you're at about 30, 35, right? Now, keep in mind, that's the best bucket. There are definitely a few people that stand out, you being oh, one wow, of them, crazy. that are get, they're retaining 50, 60, 70%. And this doesn't count for personal training. Personal training is different, right? Because you have a real relationship. Those people are able to hang on to people for a lot longer. But in the group space, it's, it's a lot tougher. Because some people forget that you know, it, they attract, it's, it's a trendy experience, but you gotta make that thing actually produce a real result. And that's what you're really great at. Yeah, it's, uh, I, I tell you, when it comes to retention, I almost find out, I almost, I do find that today, the average studio owner, we gotta get back to basics. Yep. Which is give more of you to the customer and uh, hell, be their friend, dude. Like, like they want to hang out with you. Mm -hmm. They want to know you personally. They want to get personal text messages from you. I, I love technology. I love automation. There is a point where we become a little too automated and pull ourselves away from the business. Where the whole reason we got into this business for the first in the, in the first place is to help people. Mm -hmm. So, if you're a studio and it's a high and it's a high price point, it has to be higher touch. Right. I mean, I'll give you an example. I came in today. High touch, man. You made me feel really important. I'll, you'll never lose me as a customer. Yeah. <laughs> no, you won't. I mean, like, but uh, but I know what you're doing. Yeah. But the values, even though I, even though I know what you're doing, mm -hmm. the value is so immense. Why would I ever leave you? I'm not going to get yeah. that anywhere, Mike. Yeah, yeah. So I find that with automation, which is such a great thing, we almost become too automated. You rely on the technology, you and you the lose the human. That, that's needed. You need to be human. Right. So let's talk about that. Let's say I'm a. Let's take me from the journey. Yeah. Right, uh, I'm a prospect. Right. Okay. What gets me to want? What? What? What is it about you and your studio that gets me to see something different where I'm ready to commit? Right. Um, so, it really is. A, I, I call this the Boba Fett syndrome. What is it? Boba Fett. Boba. Boba Fett. Spell, spell that for me. 
B. I, honestly, I, I'm the worst speller. It's, it, it's it's a Star Wars character. Oh, um, okay, okay. Just, just, uh, sales it, yeah. manager. Um, yeah, your, yeah, a, a VP of operations. VP operations Rob, he knows, yeah, he's yeah. a huge Star Wars. So um, okay. Boba Fett. Too many stormtroopers. Not enough Boba Fetts. Um, and if and if you're What's a Star, a Boba Fett? if you're if you're a Star Wars fan like me, Boba Fett is really just one of a million stormtroopers who defected. So he really wasn't even in many of the Star Wars movies. He's a bounty hunter. He's really just a, he's just a defective stormtrooper with a little different color uniform and a cape. Okay. He was he was in like two scenes in the franchise, but people fell in love with him because he's different. Really, and I really think that people are just so afraid to be different and scared and innovative that if I'm scrolling through Instagram or Facebook, if I stop in your club, it's the same stormtrooper, yeah. and you can't defend why your price is what it is when I could go down the street for $89 a month for this the same thing. So people just need to be a little more brave in their marketing, in their uniqueness, in their um, just disrobe yourselves of, of, of just the same. Yeah. And because people, when I, when I joined your club, I want to, it's not the workout, trust me. I could do P90X in my basement. It's you. Yeah. And why is it you? Are you different? What's different about you? It just, it just can't be like our workouts are better. Nobody cares. They yeah. don't even know. Half your trainers don't even know what that means. Right, right. So we're lacking this huge uniqueness. And so when you market or when you deliver your message, what is really different about you? And you cannot say, oh, we're just the best. Mm -hmm. Or well, we deliver, hey, this is the, the best one. We deliver the best customer service. Everybody says that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm we sure have you, great community. We have great community. Our people actually get results. Is the best. We care about getting results. Here's the thing. This is, this is important for everybody, and you will 100% agree because I already know where you're going here. Those are not selling points. Let's take, oh. it, let's take it outside of the industry. Let's say you wanted to get a sandwich, right? And I go, hey, man, you got to check out this sandwich spot. It's great. Really, what's great about it? Well, when you get there, you know, especially during lunchtime, the lines aren't going to be too long, so you're not going to have to wait for a while. Also, the ingredients they use are really fresh. The food tastes really good. And also, um, it's reasonably priced. And when you're done, you don't have to, like, wash the dishes after. And be like, yeah, dude. Because if any of those things didn't happen, I'd complain, right. right? If I had to wait too long, if the ingredients were like old, if the sandwich didn't taste yeah. good, if it was outrageously priced, and if I had to clean up after myself, if any of those things weren't done, I'd complain. So those, those aren't selling those points. Are those are standards. Do. Standards. Those. That's what keep. It's like saying. It's like an employee coming to you and say, "I want to raise." Why? Because I show up on time every day. It's <laughs> like, been, dude, that's here. why you have a job. Yeah, exactly. The only reason you have a job. That, that's a standard, right? So a selling point is what's something unique over and above uh, something that they didn't know they wanted, and you came and delivered something that's not out there anywhere else. That's a selling point. Something that differentiates you. And that's what I think you're talking about, right? Right. So when you when you deliver your message of uh, of what you do, it has to look, smell, taste, and sound unique. Mm -hmm. um, we just talked about resumes. Prime example. You know, someone uh, hands in a resume. It has to be unique, different, uh, attractive enough for me to stop and say, okay, let me get my foot. Let this person get their foot in the door, right, right. And, and just grab your attention. And uh, the best analogy I heard is, uh, it's almost like uh, like perfume. Mm -hmm. if, if any of you, any any gel or cologne, gentlemen or women out there, if you ever had a bar when you were single back in the day, and you walk through and you walk by someone, they have really nice perfume or cologne, it gets your attention and you turn. Yeah. What is your perfume? Yeah, yeah. What is your cologne that really gets their attention? It just can't be basic and the same. So, but again, that's up to you what your mm -hmm. message is and how you make it fun and exciting. And you know what? Make it you. Mm -hmm. Make it you. Don't copy my content. Right. That's the worst thing you could do. You know. Well, because the thing is, it, it'll look worse sometimes. Oh, like, it's terrible. Like Jerry Seinfeld <laughs> wanting to do the same type of comedy that Dave Chappelle that's... does, he might get booed off stage hard, right? Because Jerry Seinfeld, that's not him. If he goes up there and starts making jokes like Dave, Ch Dave Chappelle can pull it off because that's his character, right? And so for you, your studio is it's basically the Frank Nash type studio that you it would is. You, you wouldn't expect anything else, right? right? Yeah, I wear I my heart on my sleeve, exactly. Uh, you know, but we, it's 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 very weird. It's unique. It's fun. But it's still real fitness. Yeah. I mean, it, it's still hardcore real fitness. But, you know, we just happen to wear, you know, samurai costumes and have these crazy ass lights. Yeah. You know, and I don't, th I, you know, you said something that was interesting and I think it's true, which is sometimes people are afraid to be different, afraid to be unique. I also think sometimes they don't even think about it. I think sometimes what they do is they go, okay, what do I need to do? Well, let's see, what are other people doing? 
Okay, Orange Theory is doing this. Okay, we should do this. Uh, F45 is doing this. Okay, we should do that. Cycle Bar is doing this. We should do this. And really what they are, they're a jambalaya of like things that they think are working. And they, they may not realize that that may not be why that studio is working. It could be something that's not articulated or you can't see on their Instagram profile, right? But that's what you see. So when you look at it, you know, you're like, I, I, like some people I think are brave, but they're just not. Um, you ever have that one thing where you don't know what you don't know? And then somebody tells you and you go, dude, I never thought of that. Had I thought of that, I'd done it. Right? So I don't know if it's bravery that stopped you. It's more of a, I didn't think about being different. I didn't think about separating myself. And a lot of us studio owners, uh, as an example, we we, we build programs in gyms for us. Mm -hmm. And not necessarily looking through the lens of the consumer. So to your point, Mike, you're right. Um, Most studio owners will see hey, this is what you know, F45 is doing, and if you like it, and you think it's smoother or a better system, you'll adopt it. Not really thinking from Mrs. Johnson, who's a 45-year-old single mom, who's having a hard time getting to the gym. What does she really need? What does she really want? Listen, I mean, you might be a 25-year-old trainer, dude. Step in her shoes and, and look through that lens, right. and I think, uh, I think it'll be a lot more clear. Right, but uh, right. but it's, it's like most studio owners. We build gyms for us and hope people like them. Right, right. And, and for, you know, another thing too to that, you don't know if F45 is doing something that you can't see on social media that is helping Mrs. Johnson at 45 years old. You, you don't, don't know, know if F45 is about to change that process. You have no idea, I right? So, so if anybody's copying us, which there's a lot of people that want to copy what we're doing here at Loudrumor, they could only copy what they see. They can't copy what they can't. Absolutely not. Yeah. So there's a ton of stuff that happens in here that is so processed and so dialed in and the, the way we host our meetings, the way we get our people to really care, you know, all that stuff, you don't even know what's happening. You can't copy it because you don't know it exists. And so for a lot of studio owners, starting from inside your own space and then letting the outside kind of evolve from the inside first, because if you're starting from someone else's outside, you're never even seeing their inside. So you don't even know what made that outside what it is and right. why it is, right? So it's just, I think that's a big part of oh, a lot of people bike. failing, you know? Really quick, I just want to take a break too, because one of the things that's super uh, important is you make sure your company has a really great presence. It's one of the things that, you know, you've done really well. You've got a great, great presence with your brand, online, social media, website, all that. And one of the companies that we found that I'm actually really, really proud of is Apex Websites. Um, they help fitness studios put their online lead generation basically on autopilot. So how they do this is by offering websites that are mobile, optimized, and beautifully designed, featuring a customer-centric copy that aligns your fitness studio as the solution, helps your customers overcome their obstacles. They put automation features such as email follow-up, SMS notifications, um, local SEO tools so you can measure your website performance and and watch your website rank up higher and higher on the search engines like Google. I think they've got over 500 studios and martial arts schools now that are generating leads daily, much which most people aren't from their websites, daily uh, by using the Apex platforms. Um, Okay, so I come into your studio, you got the Boba Fit. Okay, so I'm a prospect. Yeah. So what's my experience like? I walk in, here I am, um, I'm a walk-in. Right, Uh, the very very first thing we do, again, we we show them love, of course, we're super friendly, super excited, but uh, we we make sure we set every single human being that walks through that door up with an orientation. Okay. It may not even be that day. We will try to accommodate them. We just, for us, in our world in Massachusetts, that is the, the foundation of our, our, it's like our incubation period and it, it'll mess up our whole process if we don't do right. it. So for example, you can't come and just work out. We have to do an orientation. So what's that look like? So let's say I walk in, you shake my hand with, it, you know, is it you, front yeah. desk person, anybody? My, Mike, hey, I'm really glad you came in. Um, this is what we do. The first thing that we have to do is just set you up with a complimentary orientation for a couple of reasons, Mike. First, I, I wanna know a lot about you. I wanna know about your goals, your wants, your needs, what you've done in the past, and I could put you through a random workout, but that's probably not what you want. Right. Um, I want to slow it down. I really want to get to know you and what you need and what you want. Sounds good. So we set up an orientation. That per, again, in between, then they get a couple text emails from us. You know, what kind of text? What kind they'll of emails? Get a, they'll get a, a text. Thank you for coming in. You know, something very similar to what you guys do here. It's a video text. Thank you for coming in. Uh, I would appreciate your time. Here's a confirmation for your next appointment. Uh, in the meantime, and you do video text. Oh, one hundred percent. Great. Always, Great. always. And again, this for us, to be honest, it's not automated. I want my people doing it for that person. Is it a templated one that you copy paste or is it no, a, hey Mike. It's an actual, take out your damn cell phone okay. and videotape yourself talking to that person you just met 
and text them now. Got it. Okay, cool. And, and again, it, it, people smell automation sometimes. That's a perfume piece, right? There. Perfume piece. And yep. I want their name in it. Got it. Okay, hey, cool. Mike, I'm really glad you came in. I'm just confirming your appointment tomorrow at 6.30. I can't wait to meet you. Um, Love it. Bottom. Boom. Also, they'll get a follow-up email, which is, um, can you take a couple seconds and download our app? That's it. Don't do so it. So you guys have an app as well? Yes. So what do I what do I use this app for? Booking appointments, scheduling, just, just to get them in good habits right away. All I want them to do is download it. Got it. Got it. So it. just download it. Just, just download it because okay. we're going to go over that in the orientation. So if I came in at 10 o'clock in the morning, let's say as a walk-in, yeah. and you got me scheduled, how soon can I do my orientation? Well, how, how quickly could I do it? It, it like, could oh, be that day. It could like be, if it, I'm ready right now, could I do it? It, it, could, it, could, it very yep. well could, unless okay. we, had an, we had a couple other orientations at that time. So you, will you out. ever do two at once? We have done that. Yep. Yep. How does uh, that work? Do it, you like for it? For us, it doesn't work out as well. Why, why, um, why not? We do want to peel back the layers and find out exactly. People don't open up. They, they won't. And, and honestly, <laughs> if someone's coming into your club, you guys know your customers. I mean, they've thought about this for years. They're scared. They're nervous. And more importantly, the, the number one reason people don't join gyms is they're ashamed. Got it, got it. So they're already ashamed. You think they're going to tell you they're, they're demons in front of the stranger next to you? We've tried that. We've had a little bit of success. But no, Orange Theory doesn't like it either. We just way more Manny. success. He was, a, he was a former sales director. Um, he, he basically helped train the salespeople or train people in sales for Orange Theory. And he said the same thing. He's like, I really want to individualize yeah. it as much as I possibly can. In, in, in a, and to this, on Orange Theory's point, we, we do all group training. We don't do any one-on-one. -on -one. So for us... This is a very unique time for us to get some one-on-one -on -one time where we build that, like, Mike, you know, you're my boy. You right, know, right. you know, and I want to learn about you. How long is your orientation? 40 minutes tops. 40 minutes? 40 and minutes so you tops. actually sit down with me? Sit down in a back Does room. that 40 minutes include any type of a workout or is it just a conversation? Nothing, just a conversation. Okay, and so do I come in prepared to work out after the orientation or is that a separate day? It's a 100% separate day. Okay. Uh, I, I, I mean... Guys, we're all training dudes here. We could do this. Hell, I could put, put together a program just seeing the person walk in. Right. I do love the value and the illusion, perhaps, of saying, well, based on what you've told me, let me, uh, let me put together a plan for you. And, uh, and let's start on Monday. And when you come in, you know, I'll have everything ready for you. And then when that person leaves, their appointment is confirmed. Another video text. Okay. Mike, it was great meeting you. Thank you for sharing. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in the process of building your workouts right now going forward. I'm going to take into consideration your right now. Now there's a lit, like I can't not show up now. You there's just too much guilt if I don't. too much guilt. And yeah. you have to, there has to be this, this layer of, uh, of accountability, which is right. why we're in business anyway, guys and girls. It's, of course. It has to be. Okay. So we, again, another personal text to that person, um, not automated. And again, even if, it, let's say it's a day out. The day of, we're sending him another video text. Hey, it's Mike again. You know, just, I know I texted you last night, but I'm really looking forward to seeing you today. I had the best workout plan for you. Uh, we just can't assume that they're going to show up. We just can't assume, because you guys know show rates are low sometimes. Yeah, yeah. How do you get that up? you got to make it personal, and Mike, you got to build in that layer of accountability and personal, that guilt. Hell, well, that's what we do. So let's say Monday's coming. Yep. Do I get anything before Monday other than the video text? Like, am I getting sent my, my meal plans or any type of workout plans, or am I just getting that for the first time in person on Monday? Uh, in between then, you're also going to get a, a video of showing, this is a template video, okay. of what your first workout's going to look like. Got it. Okay. What it's going to look like. And again, it's one of our, and I can show you, I can post this in your group. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, it's one of our ladies, Diane, who says, you know, welcome. This is what your first workout's going to look like. So that, that anxiousness, that unsureness kind of fades. In, in an empty gym, we walked them through what it's potentially going to look like. The do's, the don'ts, what to expect, when to take breaks. It's all laid out. So when they show up, there's this clear expectation of, okay, I'm not going to puke. Right. I'm not going to get my butt kicked. I'm not going to be ashamed or embarrassed. They're not going to make me feel bad. I kind of know what's going to happen today. So Love when they it. show up, we, we always we always start them with a workout. Yeah, it's always start them with a workout. That's f so so for guys watching, listening. Um, if if this is something you're really serious about, and you want to learn exactly how to do it the way Frank does. Um, right after this episode, Frank and I are going to go and shoot some really great training for uh, Loud Rumor VT, which is Loud Rumor Virtual Training, where he's going to teach step by step. He'll we'll show the video. We'll show like examples of video text, how he does it. And uh, so if you guys want access, go to loudrumorvt.com and you'll be able to get access to Frank's training. Again, that's loudrumorvt.com if you're really serious about learning exactly how to do what Frank's doing and everything we're about to continue talking about. Okay, awesome. Let's get back to it. Yeah, also, so well, what's the 
one further step. Within our orientation, again, this is so much content that we don't have time for this, but we, yeah. within our orientation, we, we tell people, one of our differentiators is, is that we're personal training. Yeah. You know, yeah, you may, be, you may be sharing time with other people, but this is still personal training. It's personal to you, which means I'm not an aerobics instructor. Again, no offense to aerobics instructors. We're not just going to work you out. We're going to dial in your nutrition. We're going to dial in your motivation. We're going to dial in your supplementation, your rest, your recovery. But we do, we do need you to exercise. Mm -hmm. though, though it may not be the most important thing for you, Mike, in terms of your goals, I got to get you in here at least, at least once to get going, to right, get the right, program right. going. Um, so day one, I do want them in the club, getting used to coming in our club on a schedule and somebody waiting and expecting them. I want that accountability factor. Then we add the second layer in, probably about a week or two later, which is nutrition. I rarely start them with nutrition first unless they are really, really obese and really out of shape. But normally, like for example, I use my mom, for example, for everything, Mrs. Nash. Mrs. Nash, I would have her come in and just walk on the treadmill and say, Mrs. Nash, I want to get you to do this for at least about a week first. Mm -hmm. Week two, I think we can add another layer because we're more apt to be receptive to it, mm -hmm. which is nutrition. You cool with that? But also, too, I'm really trying to get them, I'm, I'm really trying to level them up and look past the workout and see this as a progressive program. And uh, even th things like when we do the nutrition, depending on the person, I'll in-body them. Right, right. It's so now with the in-body, it's like we'll do this again in another six weeks. In-body, just so everybody knows, that's a machine where it can totally analyze their, yes. their there's, there's a bunch of different body types fat. out there. Yeah, there's, there's like, a, what's Staiku, I think? Skyku, like, yeah. uh, Body Map. There's a bunch of different ones. I know TRX has one. There's a bunch Have of different Have you ever ones. read the book, The Compound Effect? I haven't. Really? So it's a great book by Darren Hardy. And I, I felt like you totally did because you just basically talked about a, a part of a chapter in there uh, where, you know, working out for some people is super hard. You know, like it for sucks. us, working out, like if we miss two days in a row, we're like, what are we doing with our lives? You know, we're falling apart, right? right. Whereas the average person may go a year, two years, and hasn't worked out. And... Uh, and so getting back in it, I mean, that might be a nightmare, especially that first workout. Oh, man. And they're not lifting what they used to. They can't, they don't have the stamina that they used to. And then they're way more sore than they expected to be if you put them through a standard workout. So the compound effect, what he talks about in the book is, he says, hey, just do this. Just go walk around the block. And then, you know, do that three times a week. And then next week, just do 15 minutes. And then the next week, add, add 15 more. And then do it four days a week. And then, and next thing you know, that person ran a marathon in six months. It was, the, the, the last it was thing, crazy. The last <laughs> thing our members need is for us to beat the crap out of them. Yeah. They already feel like crap. And, yet, and everyone watching this who are trainer dudes listening, what is exercise anyway? It's just catabolically breaking down tissue. Right. So Mrs. Nash comes in and she asks you, she, she tells you she wants to lose body fat. Can you help her? Mm -hmm. Why the hell would you have her work out four times a week? Mm -hmm. She didn't want to work out four times a week. She hard. wants to lose body fat. It's hard for her. It's impossible. She'll never do it. She'll quit. But what she yeah. really needs is have her walk on the treadmill once or twice. Maybe come in for a 30-minute session once a week. Then talk nutrition with her because that's where she needs to help. Mm -hmm. She doesn't need a, a beatdown. And we're, yeah. we're almost in the beatdown business. Yeah. Um, shit, people are already beat up, Mike. That's yeah. why, honestly, guys, that's why recovery uh, business is so huge and they're blowing up is because people don't like the way they feel. Mm -hmm. Forget about cosmetically. Everybody wants to lose weight. Let's be honest. If you're, if you're Mr. Olympia and you just want, oh, you want to get leaner. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody wants to get leaner, but people just want to feel better too. We yeah. can't be in the beatdown business, man. You know what the nutrition thing too, I, I've, I've learned in my experience here that when it comes to members, there's two types of members in, in this one aspect, which is there's a member that they start, they're working out, they know they're working out hard, and so they eat healthy automatically because they don't want to waste oh, the workouts. And then there's another person that because they're working out, they think they can eat a certain way because I'm working out now, so I can eat this pizza, I can eat that. And now they don't start seeing results. And who do they blame? Yeah, they blame the workout. Fault. Yeah, right? and naturally, if I'm that person, if I'm exercising more, my need for calories increases. Yeah. So I'm naturally not necessarily more. pizza. No, right. <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily like an extra two slices now because I did I did lemons yeah. this weekend. Man, but that's that. Know your customer. Yeah. Know your customer. And I love when people will say this, Mike. Damn, I started working out at Mike's gym, man. All I did is work out. I lost thirty pounds. No, you didn't. Yeah. You somehow got a hold of your nutrition, whether yeah. you intuitively did it or you didn't. You you you, you cleaned there's it up other on some. things there. You, uh, there's other stuff yeah. there. You can't just move. So. Let's talk about the other parts, right? So what, what else is my experience? I do my first workout. I did my orientation. 
here's my first workout. You have me going through some stuff, but what's my relationship with like with other members, oh, with other instructors, whatever it is? We, we make it a point on the very first visit. Again, this is when they, if you just walked in, Mike, I'm going to make it a point, just like you did here today, to introduce you to every person in the gym. Everyone. Every single person in the gym. Members, I don't, I don't care how long it takes. Really? I will introduce you to everybody. I will interrupt other members' workouts to introduce them because it's that important. It's That's that important. Smart. That's that important. I'll say, hey, put that kettlebell down for a second. Come here. I want you to meet Julie. Julie's just starting. I go, she went She went to the same high school as you. What? Get out of town. I go, you know I'll get back to work. You know what's great, too? That not only gives you a chance to get that person to talk to that member, but you get another touch point with that member that's already been with you. That's, you know, like, it's just another touch point. You know what? If we're going to if we're gonna talk about community, that's community, man. Mm -hmm. and, and, and is it... Is it completely rehearsed? Yes. Do I want to do that? No. I want to bring that person out back. Again, just the business person to me. Bring that person to the back room, get them to sign up and get them out. But I'm playing the long game. How do I get that person to feel comfortable next time they come in? They just met 20 members. They know the entire staff. And we'll also do things like, Julie, do you usually work out at this time? Yep, well, so does Nancy. I go, Nancy, look for Julie. All right, keep an eye on her. She's new. <laughs> you know, stuff like that. Oh, you, man, have that's to, great. you have to do that. How long does your average member stay with you? Oh, man, shoot. Average member is right around 18 months. 18 months. 18 months. And what do your average 17, members pay to be a part a of this? Average studio? member, all in, we're talking uh, membership and profit centers. Can we, can, can we just say uh, membership, just membership real quick? The, 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 the average membership is two ninety a month. So they're, So it's not cheap. No. So it's two ninety a month, eighteen months, and then how much does the average member spend on a monthly basis on additional stuff? Whether it's roughly retail, sixty dollars. So your average member with that sixty dollars is three fifty a yep. month, yep. right? And you're retaining them for an additional eighteen months. So just with your additional stuff, you're basically getting an extra nine hundred dollars per member. Just just with your what is that? That's it. what are your profit centers? Like what other things can you make money? V on? Very simple. T-shirts, water. Supplements, uh, and that's it. What do you charge for water? One, it's a buck for eight ounces. A and, buck and, for eight ounces. We are, not to give this shameless plug, but it's a company I work for called Stealth Water, and it's just a, a, a super filtered, ionized water filter, kind of like what you guys have here, yeah. where you run your card, app, eight really? ounces, every, it's eight ounces per. So it's what's, your, what's your cost on that? It's, I tell you what, this company is crazy. Um, I might have a special deal, but it's, um, They'll, the, if your club has enough members, they'll give it to you for free, the whole unit. It's crazy. Wow. These guys are nuts. And they just give you a split. So I'll end up, you know, maybe it's my special deal. I get 60% of everything. And I do wow. nothing. They install it. They plumb it. And, but That's for, pretty cool. But for our members who are, like, like uh, environment, environmental conscious, mm -hmm. save on the plastic. Right, Most right. people walk around with these Yetis and blender bottle koozies anyway. Yeah, yeah. Fill it up, and it's better water than bottled water. Now, if somebody forgot their Yeti, can they buy bottled water, or no. can they buy a glass or anything? Like, how no, can they, we, how can we, they drink? We have a uh, we have a behind the desk in our iPad. We can just scan. Like, we get, you know, we'll hook so, them up, or, or we'll take their phone out and upsell them. Got to upsell yeah. them like on a thermos yeah, exactly. or something like that. Okay, yep. good. Um, and t-shirts. So you got a lot of people wearing your shirts. That's it, man. And listen, t-shirts. And, and, and obviously it says stronger. Oh, so that's of course like, it does. Yeah. So t-shirts are, are a tough one. And then good luck to anyone out there doing t-shirts because unless you're in the clothing business, good luck with this. Uh, we're lucky enough to have a local supplier who's excellent, and you can actually go down there in person, feel the material. Um, but t-shirts. If you if you're a studio owner or a gym, if you break even. If people are wearing your shit, you hit a home run. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but we roughly make, I would say, six bucks off t-shirt when also the done. Six bucks a shirt. Okay, and then supplements. I'm sure that's where oh, you dude, make we, most we, of we, your well, profit. Oh, we crushed that. Right? Yeah, I mean, we're 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 easily making twenty to twenty three k a month just on supplements. Twenty, really? Yep. Okay, so twenty to tw so half, quarter of a million dollars mm. a year, just yep. off subs. Just off subs. Just just and and is that profit or is that revenue? That's revenue. Revenue. What yeah. would you say your profit is on something Half. like that? Half of that. So basically, one hundred and twenty-five grand a year profit. Right. To the same people anyway. Same people anyway. So and you. So let's let's do the math on that, guys. So everybody knows, right? So check this out. Frank charges. So so let, let's say uh, hundred hundred and twenty-five k, right? Hundred and twenty-five k a year divided by two hundred and ninety dollars a month, which is what the average member pays you, divided by twelve. That's that's like having an extra 36 members stay with you for a full year without having to actually take up any floor space. 
I tell you what, Mike, and, and the craziest thing too is even a, lo a lot of studio owners who I know will, will kind of scoff at members who come in and say, Mike, let me, what's the cheapest membership? Mm -hmm. Sell it to them. Because there's the profit center on the back end. So imagine someone who comes in, again, my average member is somewhere <clears throat> at 290. If someone comes in and wants to buy a $150 membership and they want to come one day a week, I know I'm still going to get another $60 out of them. So it's really a $210 membership. Right. Like, I mean, you have to think beyond the, or, or the specialty programs you sell on top of that, water, t-shirt, it's, it's endless. Right, so at $350, let's say $350, multiply that by 18 months, your average member is worth to you $6,300 on revenue, right? And let's say your margins are pretty steady, which is around, right around a third, right? right? Would you yep. say you're right around right. there? Exactly. Okay, so your, your average member in profit is worth about $2,100. Now, the reason that's great is because the a that's way higher than normal. The average person's charging in the industry about $150 a month, and they're retaining people for about seven months, which is only about 1050 And a lot of people aren't actually selling supplements in retail. They offer them different than selling right. them. Very different. Why, why wouldn't you? Right? I mean, shit. So if they're, if they're, let's say, at 1050 divided by three, same margins, they're only profiting $350 per member, whereas you're profiting $2,100 per member, which means they can't spend more than $350 no. to acquire a member and break even. You can spend $2,100, or you can spend, if you spend $350 to acquire a member, you get a 6X return. That's the numbers, That's guys. That's the number, baby. That's the numbers. That's why we want to really focus on keeping people longer and selling more to them. Okay, yeah, so, so a lot of people say, I don't want to sell supplements to my members because I time, feel like, this or I feel like that or I feel like I'm being greedy or I feel like I'm selling. What are your thoughts? Because I'm on your page, but yeah, I want you to say. Yeah, I have, I have a lot of thoughts on this. and I have this conversation probably daily. And you know what? It's a, it's a, it's a real problem. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a real concern. Is uh, Here's a crazy statistic. Nine out of ten trainers consume supplements themselves. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. So, so obviously we, we, as, a, we, we, as, a, we as an industry, we believe in it as, as trainers. So why would I not offer you what I'm doing for myself? Um, and the reason is, is because the mass market supplement industry is crazy. I mean, half of them are mislabeled, yeah. half are toxic. It's not we, regulated. It's, it's not regulated. It's, and everyone knows that. I mean, go yeah. on Facebook and check it out. But so because of that, I will do harm to myself. I, I will take, let's just say shitty supplements mm -hmm. or, or take a risk, but I will do no harm to you, my customers. So traders are good people. So I can see the apprehension, but the crazy statistic is this, Mike. 84% of all of our members are spending a minimum of $55 a month or more anyway. on subs anyway. And my question to, to the, the trainer who's apprehensive is, where do you think your favorite client or member is buying these supplements? Walmart. GNC. Yeah, you're worried about you giving them bad stuff. <laughs> they're probably getting worse they, they're, stuff. They're basically buying educated. toxic waste. They didn't do as so, much research as you did. And I'll go one step further. Why would you make it a pain in the ass for your members who are buying it anyway? Now they're going to go down to GNC or, yeah. or Walmart. You're, you're their guy. You're their girl. You're the source. Just tell me what to do, dude. Provide me. You know, say, listen, these are our partners. You know, whoever your partner is. Um, but why? I, I, You know what's funny? So before you got here, you were in the restroom, right? When you, when yeah. you took a break, right? McKenna came up to me and she was talking to me about supplements. She's like, hey, what do you think I should take? You know, brand chain amino acids, you think they're good? I'm like, yeah, I think they're good. She's like, what brand do you use? And I said, uh, you know, message me later, I'll show you. She wants to know what brand I use because she appreciates and respects my the research that I've already done. Right. She knows I've done my research. So why wouldn't you help her? Because where, McKenna, where did you go for the supplement prior? No, it's, it's, Where'd you this go? is great. GNC. GNC. No, it's great. Now, 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 why did you get the supplement you chose? Because a guy told me to. Because right. a guy that worked at GNC for two weeks, prior to that, he was working at, you know, Macy's. Right, it was some prepubescent high school kid who, for some reason, <laughs> yeah. Read the a, back of the yeah, box and told McKenna this, this is what it will this do. This poor kid is qualified <laughs> to give you nutritional <laughs> slash supplement advice, but I'm not. That's another, by the way, Mike, right. that's another one, too. Most trainers, they feel it's out of their scope of practice. Yeah. They, they, they really feel, but also that comes from a lack of knowledge. There's a, there's a zillion reasons why, but ultimately your, your members are buying it anyway. Mm -hmm. Provide that stopgap. They should be giving you the money and supporting you and be their trusted source. Not the GNC guy. Not the GNC guy. That kid got guy. a commission. Could you believe that? He yeah. got a commission on that. Of course he did. He has no care about what McKenna no, does after this. He, he could care less. He, he, yeah, he, he, he forgot McKenna. <laughs> he's <laughs> he's yeah. on to the next guy. Um, okay, so, so now when it comes to supplements, what kind of supplements do you 
personally like to um, make sure your, your members are getting at a minimum? And then what do you recommend majority of the time? Right. Now, now going back real quick to Mike about selling supplements. Listen, if, I, if you're a trainer, chances are very high that you're taking supplements yourself so you believe in them. So you're not selling shit. All you're doing is your job. Mm -hmm. if, you, if, 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 you, if you want to deliver nutrition, you have to talk supplements. If you want to talk supplements, you have to talk nutrition. All supplements are people are just filling in nutritional gaps where you may be deficient. Right. So if it's me and you come in, Mike, and you want to work out and get in shape, you know, it's my goal to help, you know, to, to kind of dive in and find out where you're deficient based mm -hmm. on your answer. So uh, there's only one supplement on the planet every human being needs to take, and that's a multivitamin. Yeah. That's the only like mandatory. It's just the nutritional gaps that exercise, environment, mm -hmm. and, and just progressive aging create you just can't do it through food alone i wish yeah. we could you just can't you can't so i mean multivitamin is the one stable everything else if you're deficient just fill in gaps and for me i find that most people especially like my customer that comes in definitely a multivitamin and definitely they're protein deficient mm -hmm. they're definitely trust me we all eat enough carbs we all yeah. know that <laughs> but we can but get the, carbs no problem you know but think about this for a second you have mrs yeah. nash come in she wants to lose body fat not weight, she wants to lose body fat. She comes into your club, she starts exercising, which is catabolic. The only thing that could build or repair tissue is protein. Mm -hmm. So unless I want Mrs. Nash to become skinnier or fatter than she already is, right. I need to provide her the fuel which is gonna help her maintain or gain muscle mm -hmm. and only lose the body fat so she gets stronger, so she feels better. Because you know what's gonna happen? If you throw in one of these in-bodies, you don't provide her with the proper protein intake, a month later, if she does that again and she loses muscle, it's your fault. Yeah. You, 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 and her body fat's actually higher now. Mm -hmm. So the, the main two are really just a multivitamin and a protein. Now, of course, I'll dig a little deeper. If, if, if you don't drink milk and you're not hitting your 1,200 to 1,500 milligrams of calcium per day, if you're not getting it through food, let me supplement it. Right, if right. you don't eat fish two to four times a week, you, we all know the power of omega-3 mm -hmm. fatty acids. You probably should take a fish oil. If you do eat fish two to four times a week, you're good. You're probably good. It's I mean, overkill. it's overkill. Um, just dig, understand what the understand members it, got it, and what they don't have. That's where you should start everybody. And then all the other things come on top of that. Probiotics, uh, amino acids, <laughs> uh, joint flex. You never want to start by, by selling someone or, or, provi or recommending 20 different supplements. It's not going to work. There's yeah. w everyone champions that one person that bought all the supplement. That, yeah, yeah. They're not doing that. You don't want to sound like a sales, a, a silly sales, supplement salesperson because we get that all the time on mm -hmm. private messenger anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So with your uh, with with your employees, are they focused and as motivated as you are to sell supplements? And if, if it's needed, right? Oh, like like push push all the things, the t-shirts. One hundred percent, really. Because and how how are they how are they incentivized? Um, num number one is in, in order to work for for me or or the stronger <laughs> brand like your brand, you got to be into it. So these are all things that they believe in, they're into anyway. So it's just part of doing their job. But on top of it, incentivize my, the company I partner with for supplements, they, the relationship we have has sponsored all my trainers. So they get free supplements anyway. Mm -hmm. So all I want them to do is be into it. Even if they're good salespeople or terrible salespeople, because we have those people, I just want someone to be able to say, Mike, what do you take for amino acids? Oh, I take this company right here. Here's what I do. Mm -hmm. So you really need to get your staff on board. Uh, and, there, and I have a thousand different compensation plans that you can dig into, but in terms of- We could talk about that in Loudwell oh, VT. That's a whole nother thing. Yeah. There's a lot, there's some really successful clubs that kill this <clears throat> with, with compensations. But in terms of just getting your staff involved, whatever that means, but there really should be a zero tolerance policy in terms of your trainers, especially if they work for you, taking other brands that you're not partnered with because mm -hmm. it just ruins your whole message, man. It kills your culture. Yeah. It'll be like me coming to loud, working at Loud Room or wearing some other you know, marketing company's t-shirt. Come yeah, on, yeah, man. Yeah. It'll kill do, it. No, it kills it. So all I ask is that they take it and they're knowledgeable about it. Mm -hmm. And again, we, we educate them too. Yeah. But in terms of t-shirts too, just wear it. That's all I care about, yeah. wear it. Make it look good. And yeah. Probably, and probably if you're a trainer, you're probably fit looking, you make the shirt yes. look better. Because you know what happens. You don't have to sell it. Just wear it. Hey, where do I get that? Oh, that's funny. Yeah, putting yeah, it on yeah. next week. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for all of you guys, you know, want to see exactly like the incentivization plans and all that stuff uh, for for that same thing. Loudroomervt.com. If you're really serious about it, you can also give us a call 480-750-9774. Again, that's 480-750-9774, and we'll show you how to get involved. 
and uh, be able to access all this stuff step by step so you can see it too. Okay, so ongoing, I'm a member of yours. I'm a month in, I'm two months in, three months in. How are you ensuring that I'm still excited and and I'm not like squirrel, like looking over at the yeah. other studio. I'm not going, oh, Orange Series got a free week. Ooh, uh, Cycle Bar's got this thing going on. And, and how are you ensuring I lock in? You know, uh, it, once I got you in the door, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's my it's my job to keep you, and I can only lose you. And that's my I always take it personal. That's my fault, 100. Mm -hmm. If you leave, some um, uh, if you move to Thailand, it's not my fault. Mm -hmm. Actually, yeah. I, I do take it personal still. <laughs> like, damn, what do we do wrong? Well, why would you move? Why would you move? But, Screw um, that job. But so the goal is, I, I got you. I'm not I'm not really worried about my competition because if we do what we're supposed to do, there's no reason for you to leave. Yeah. So every one of our coaches has a list of members to touch. Mm -hmm. every single month and to make sure are you good Mike are you good so we will reach out to every single person via text phone in the club every single person and just check it out how often every month every month every single how month. would you what, what kind of text would I get what would it say it would be a video text again video I'm, text, I'm, I'm huge day. on that you know what it, to know me is to love me and again you know you're my guy like yeah, yeah, okay yeah. Mike it's Frank you know I'm just checking in that kick-ass month so far your workouts are great your nutrition is great just want to make sure Everything's cool. Is there anything more I can do to help you in this club? You did it every month. Every single month. Every single month. To the point, now, where, to the point where they say, okay, Frank, you don't have to do that. Yeah. No, I do because I want to make sure you're good. Yeah, I love that. I love that. Um, one thing, too, I remember one time, I can't remember when we talked about it, but uh, I think it was actually when we did that Zoom recording in our Facebook yeah. group for our members. And I was like, what do you do if a person does put in their cancellation or their pause? And you had like this really awesome, like, rebuttal for it or how to get them to not cancel or pause or how to continue staying with you or something like that. Yeah, I, I tell you what, um, this is something we've done for years. And to be honest, guys, nobody wants to quit. People hate being quitters. They, they've probably been thinking about it for a while. Um, they they don't want to not work out. And yeah. chances are, we all know this, your members aren't going anywhere else. Mm -hmm. and real. I mean, very rarely, just so you know, does someone quit your club and go to another club? There's a one person that does that and it hurts our feelings. But chances are, they're not doing anything. They're done. So they're just over it. it they feel it, like they're it's not over working. it. They're over it. Um, they need some couch time. They need to talk them off the ledge. So instead of just saying, "Okay, that's cool," you know, you know, we'll put in the cancellation. Why don't we be proactive? Call them. Literally, get them on the phone. Hey, Mrs. Johnson, I need to talk to you. Um, Mrs. Johnson, it's Frank. I want to call you personally. I got your message. Um, so what's up? Listen to Let's, them. Can I role play? Yes. Okay. So what's up? I'm Mrs. Johnson. Yeah, Mrs. Johnson. What's up? You know, Frank, um, everything, you know, is good. You guys are great. I love the workouts, but um, I think I just need to take a little bit of a break. You know, it's just you know, with schedule work and everything. And also, I just feel like, you know, I'm not really, I think it's all getting in the way of me getting the results. I'm not moving as fast as I need to. You know, Mrs. Johnson, I clearly remember back in December when we talked and I remember you telling me, hey, Frank, listen, do me a favor. Don't let me quit. I remember that. Remember that? Yes. You know, and here I am. I tell you what, Mr. Johnson, I have a really good solution for you because I know you don't want to quit. I know you don't. Let's hook up Monday, just you and I. Let's get a cup of coffee and let's figure out a plan to work around your crazy schedule, your kids, your work, your family, and make this work for you. I wish I, I wish you were the only person that's in this boat, but you're not alone. Mm -hmm. I have these conversations every day and my goal is to get you in shape and not let you quit. I will never give up on you. What time Monday works for you, Mr. Well, Johnson? Well, Frank, I saw the schedule. I just don't know how I'm going to be able to make it work. Uh, Mrs. Johnson, are you, uh, how about this? I'll meet you halfway. You free for Starbucks? You want to meet at Starbucks Thursday? What are you doing right now? You want to do a Zoom meeting? <laughs> All right, yeah, let's do, let's, let's just, I'll, I'll come down to the studio. Okay, Monday. okay. Um, I'm, not, I'm not telling you to come down every day. I can give you some at-home workouts, but I think you really need to sit down with me and figure out a strategy that's gonna work best for you. But the answer of, of quitting, it's not the answer. You started for a reason, I'm not gonna let you quit. Dude, I love that. I mean, it, it's so to, it's so real. To, it, be it's, honest, it's, to be honest, to be honest, guys. Could you quit, McKenna? Could, could yeah. you quit? I couldn't quit. No, no, but, no, but <laughs> guys, I, I mean this like, I to be honest, if we're in this business, we care about people. And is that the, I, I always say- Well, you're, hey, not, you're not even using a, yeah technique no. you're just you're ha you're being real that's being why i say real. it's so real if it was i always use the example of my mom if it was my mom i would want a trainer to call her don't let her quit yeah come on actually if don't my mom out. was a member of, of your gym and she put in her notice and she would because she hates exercise it's like she's like superman that's kryptonite she hates exercise and she gave her notice if you did not save her i'd be pissed at you mm -hmm. 
I mean, like, it's just a human thing to do and be real. Why would you let them quit? They don't want to quit. It's not, it's, not, it's not a money thing. Yeah, yeah, it's not a money. It's, it's never a money thing, guy. It's never a money thing. Yeah, that's, a, that's awesome, man. Awesome. Okay, so look. We talked about a ton of stuff here. I love this, dude. And, and the funny I mean, thing we is we can, day, go, yeah, we can go forever, but we got to go start filming. So, guys, we are about to go step by step on all this stuff. I, you know, I know no matter what, you had to have gotten value because I got value. I hope today. so, guys. I absolutely did. And, uh, again, if you want to see just, like, really dive in, stuff that we just couldn't cover in an hour, right? Um, the scripts and the video texts and the video and basically the compensation plan for subs, all that stuff. Just make sure you give us a call, 480-750-9774, or go to loudroomervt.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, please give us a like, comment, let us know what you've, uh, what you've really enjoyed. Say hi to Frank, whatever you'd like to do. Um, share it with anybody you think that would, like to, uh, that would like to learn the stuff that we learned here today. And uh, other than that, guys, this is a great episode. Yeah. Hey guys, remember, go check out GSD Con. It's September 29th, 30th, and October 1st. Oh, awesome. Guys, it's it's not a it's not an educational seminar, it's an experience. Yeah, yeah. Go to gsdcon.com, check, check it out. We I can't wait. There's dude. videos from last year yeah. on the website, so you guys can check it out then. Frank, man, I can't thank you enough. It was this my was pleasure. Episode. Thank you for making it all the way out here. Thanks, guys. And for everyone watching, everyone listening, we will see you in the next episode. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like this episode, make sure you subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, Google Play, or YouTube. And to watch more episodes and get exclusive links from each episode, go to gsdshow.com. Again, that's gsdshow.com.